Corruption is one of the main challenges to peace, stability, social equality, sustainable development, and human rights around the world, Nigeria included. Experts believe that the key to reducing poverty is to undertake an integrated approach to development which can help address environment, education, health, and governance. Good governance entails trust between the state and the people, integrity, transparency, rule of law, checks and balances, and increased involvement of all other stakeholders. Citizens must have human rights instruments recognized as fundamental rights to a fair and public hearing by a competent, independent, and impartial tribunal established by law. For the protection of such laws, the importance of this right depends upon proper administration of justice. A very important essential element of the right to a fair trial is an independent and impartial tribunal. Another inherent component of a fair hearing is the bureaucratic equality of parties, the so-called equality of arms. But if the judicial system is corrupt, no such elements will exist. Judicial fraud influences disproportionate access to and outcome of judicial verdicts. The decisions will remain unfair and predictable, and consequently the rule of law will not succeed. It's a well-known fact that a judge who has taken a bribe cannot be independent, impartial, or fair. Judicial integrity and capacity must be dealt with head-on in any reformative action. There is increasing evidence of the infiltration of corruption into all branches of government that have been charged with the protection of the rule of law. The judiciary is the public institution that is mandated to provide essential checks on other public institutions. A fair and efficient judiciary is the key to anti-graft fight. But there are also more practical considerations suggesting that initiatives to strengthen the integrity of the institutional framework should initially focus on the judiciary. Because of its independence, the judiciary typically holds a comparatively strong position made inside the institutional framework. While police and prosecution are often susceptible to political interference, the judiciary only has to face the issues of insufficient capacity and integrity inside its own institution. The judiciary tends to be the smallest of the justice system institutions. On October the 8th and 9th, 2016, the Department of State Services, DSS, arrested Justices Sylvester Uguta and John Okoro of the Supreme Court, Justice Adeni Adimola of the Federal High Court, Abuja, and Justice Muazu Pindiga of the Federal High Court, Gombe Division. Justice Nandi Dimba's residence was also searched, but he was not arrested. Former Chief Judge of Enugu State, Justice I.A. Omezulike, the presiding justice of the Court of Appeal, Ilorin Division, Justice Mohamed Samia, and the judge of the Kanu State High Court, Justice Kabiru Ata, were also arrested and arraigned by operatives of the security service. The DSS insisted it recovered large sums of money in Nigerian and foreign currencies from three of the judges during the raids on the houses of the seven judiciary officers. After several months of trial, a high court in Abuja cleared Justice Adini Adimola and his wife, Olabo Ali, of charges of corruption brought against them by the Attorney General of the Federation. Institute, my Lord Justices of the Supreme Court. At this year's All Nigeria Judges Conference of the Superior Courts held at the National Judicial Institute, Abuja, where the Chief Justice of Nigeria and his predecessors, retired Justices Alpha Belgore, Idris Kutigi, Mahmoud Mohammed, amongst others. In her opening remarks, the administrator, National Judicial Institute, Justice Rosalind Bozimo, said the aim of this gathering was to reflect on the achievements and challenges of this arm of government. This conference is a biannual event organized by the National Judicial Institute in fulfillment of its mandate of continuing judicial education for all categories of judicial officers and their supporting staff. Justice Posimo explains that the objectives of such conferences is to promote efficiency and improvement in the services of the judiciary. The Institute has over the years organized annual conferences as avenues for judges to meet in order to share their wealth of knowledge, experiences and thoughts 
as well as profile solutions on issues of common interest with a view to repositioning the Nigerian judiciary for optimal performance. We remain motivated, responsive, and open to new ideas in the midst of challenges. The Chief Justice of Nigeria highlights the purpose of the forum. This conference is, indeed, is intended to serve as a forum for, to give judges the opportunity to come together every two years in order to discuss our common problems and exchange ideas and experiences for the enrichment of our performance as a third arm of government. It is therefore an occasion which is unique to the Nigerian judiciary. The CJN touches more on issues related to corruption at the judiciary. You will all agree with me that a corrupt judge is not only a disgrace to the bench and the noble profession, but also a disaster to the cause of justice and the nation. I must not fail to emphasize here that my definition of corruption is not limited to the bribe taking, but includes the giving of judgments or orders based on any consideration other than legal merit. It is gratifying to note, however, that the National Judicial Institute, uh, the National Judicial Council, is already tackling this cankerworm headlong. In light of the foregoing, the National Judicial Council, under my watch, has constituted the Corruption and Financial Crimes Cases Trial Monitoring Committee, CONTRICO, which has just been inaugurated under the chairmanship of Honorable Mr. Justice Suleiman Daladima, CFR, JSC retired, to serve as a check on the excesses of some bad acts in the justice sector. I am confident that in due course, our efforts to rid the judiciary of questionable persons shall yield results.